My name's Carl Salberg, and today we're going to talk about soldering in the dollhouse. I find that a majority of miniaturists seem to be very afraid of learning how to solder. I get more resistance from individuals when talking about soldering than anything else. To do the best job, though, in your wiring your dollhouse, you really do need to learn how to solder. Soldering really isn't that difficult. You may need to practice a little, but most of it is in having the right supplies, learning how to take care of your soldering iron, and most important, the maintaining a clean tip on the iron itself. I've become very comfortable using the iron I sell in my soldering kit, and what I am using in this video is the same iron I've used for the last four years. I've replaced the tip only twice. And you'll find that you'll need to replace your tip periodically, but with maintaining it properly, you shouldn't have to do it very often. Let me start by showing you what is included in the complete dollhouse soldering kit and some information on how to care for the iron. Then we'll show the proper use of the iron while soldering different items within the dollhouse. This is the soldering iron kit as you'll receive it. It has about six items that are in here, and let me go over the six different items that you have. The first one that we have is the brass ball cleaner. This is the one item that I use repeatedly in keeping the tip clean, and we'll show you how we use this in a few minutes. But the brass ball cleaner is what is the most important item that's in here next to the soldering iron itself. You'll also get a tip tinner and cleaner. The tip tinner and cleaner uh, is exactly that. It's for use, using it to clean the excessive oxidation off of the tip of the iron. I do include solder and I have a large roll of solder. It's 60-40 rosin core solder and I particularly like this uh, 0.8 millimeter diameter solder and that's what I put into the soldering kit. The other two items that I have is a soldering stand uh, for the iron. Uh, I prefer this particular type of uh, unit where I can uh, pick up the center yoke on here and set my iron directly onto that yoke. I do not like the cylinders or the springs that you can put the iron into uh, as they generally don't fit properly and the iron tip itself will bounce up onto the spring and that will cause the tip to cool so that you're constantly having to wait for a few seconds before you're able to solder properly um, and it also affects that tip by the heating and cooling that it repeatedly is doing every time you put the iron back into that spring, uh, it will uh, shorten the life of that tip considerably. So uh, the best one that I like is just this very simple little stand that you can set the iron on. The other item that comes in the uh, kit is a sponge and it's a cellulose sponge it it is made for cleaning the soldering iron there is nothing in it you can't use a sponge that you get for doing the dishes because it usually has residues in there and soaps and so forth this is a clear cellulose or clean cellulose uh, sponge and we use it sparingly but we'll be using that in maintenance and taking care of the individual iron uh, the one that we didn't talk about is the iron, which obviously is the most important uh, item that we have. Um, this is the iron, and it's a brand new one that I put out here. Uh, I'll mention that it is a 60-watt iron. The 60-watt will go a little bit hotter, and it will maintain a higher uh, heat onto the, uh, the tip. So I put in the 60-watt iron. It does have an adjustable heat knob on here. I put that at 400 and that's 400 uh, Celsius is what it represents. But that's more than sufficient. Uh, try not to go higher than that 
because if you do go higher, uh, it's just going to increase the oxidation that you get onto the tip and it will cause create a shorter lifespan on the tip itself. The tip that I have on here, I select a particular type of tip also, and it is already in your unit. It is a, a chisel tip, and it's about a sixteenth of an inch uh, chisel tip that's on here. It is not a conical tip, but it's very small. Uh, I find it, it works the best. Uh, I would go as much as an eighth of an inch uh, tip might be even easier for some of you to use while you're working on the dollhouse. If you need to change this tip, all you do is loosen the collar. And obviously you want the iron off <laughs> on there. It simply removes uh, from the top. You can exchange and put a new tip on there when needed and bring this back down. While I'm playing with this collar on here, I'll also mention that after you have used the iron, uh, when you clean the iron and are ready to put it away, unplug it, let it cool, and then loosen the nut that's on here. Uh, and obviously when you start again, you want to make sure that that nut is good and tight. If you don't do that, the heating and cooling of the mechanism in here will freeze uh, that nut onto the threads and it can become very difficult to uh, unscrew it at a later date. So if you get in the habit of loosening that up every time that you're done soldering, you'll find that it, it really helps in the maintenance and uh, use of the iron. That's about all I can show you on the iron. Let me take one that is over here that's already hot. This one is one that I had in one of the classes that I teach. And you can see that we're pretty dark up on the, the tip here, especially what we want to look at is right at the tip. That's a copper uh, tip that's on here, but it has an iron coating over the very tip of it. Uh, the reason is that copper transmits heat very readily, so it is an excellent metal to have the basic tip made of, but it is very uh, susceptible to wear, and in using it, you're going to pit it quite easily. So they put an iron coating over the top of the copper, and that's what we want to tin and keep that good and clean. Once you pit that iron coating, you're going to affect the uh, copper underneath and you can damage that tip uh, in a short period of time. So we need to maintain that. Uh, from about that position back, it actually has a chrome coating that's on there, which is the same that's on the barrel, uh, which the heating element is underneath this section here. The darkness that's on there, you don't need to keep that clean. We need to make sure that the very tip of it is kept the cleanest. I've got my brass ball that's on here. When I first turn on my iron, I generally will just go into here and stab it a few times and make sure that the uh, iron doesn't come out good and clean. But as you can see, just by stabbing it into this brass, the tip on here is fairly shiny. Uh, and that shows me that I don't have a lot of oxidation on the tip. Once you have cleaned that, you want to come back and tin it. So tinning, all you need to do is come up here with your solder on here to be able to tin it. And you want to make sure that when you touch the very tip of it, it'll hold that solder. And you should be able to do it. Now this side isn't doing it quite as well. So we either need to clean it a little bit more and get our tinning on here. There we go. But you need to be able to get the tin right onto the tip and that it'll hold it in that position. If we're not quite clean enough for that to grab the solder, we're going to use our tip tinner and cleaner. And what that is, is just a cleaning solution that has um, uh, solder uh, 
rosin in there and it has a, an, a little a bit of an abrasive cleaner and we'll just set it into this and roll the tip around and you can see how nice and clean that tip looks but immediately come back and apply a decent amount of solder we'll rub it into that ball a little bit more and if you notice it accepts the solder all the way to the tip all the way around and so we're in good shape I'm just gonna take off a little bit of that excessive amount that's on there and we'll set it on our stand out of the the way here so that it doesn't um, get in trouble let me take the other one that I had meant to bring first uh, this is the one that was in the class and again going in here we're going to see how much we can clean it and it's not bad uh, I have the students clean the things before they put them away so I couldn't find one that was really encrusted I generally will use the tip tinner only when I'm starting to do soldering and I'll put the iron in here as we did on the other one just roll it around clean it into my brass ball and then immediately put your solder back on here and this one is really quite good too the other option that you have is after you have cleaned it with the tip tinner and cleaner you can clean off that residue of oxidation that's on here with the sponge and we're just going to wipe that down all the way around and then I'm going to go ahead into my brass ball again and we're going to put another coating of solder all the way around this now again I only use the sponge and the tip tin cleaner uh, only when I'm first starting in the day when I'm going to be uh, soldering if it needs it as you saw me I first went into our brass ball and the brass ball is what I use repeatedly throughout the day while I'm soldering and you'll see me constantly going into that and keeping the tip uh, clean and and shiny like that so that it'll accept the the solder that when we're soldering individual items and so forth the again the reason that I don't use the wet uh, sponge is that every time that you're wiping it you're cooling that tip and you're causing the iron to heat it and then cool it and then heat it and it'll cause early breakdown of that iron coating that's on the on the tip so be sparingly with use with the sponge be sparingly with this uh, tip tinner as well when you get your new iron you should actually uh, heat it up when you're going to use it and put a good decent amount of solder onto the tip of the iron um, that will do the tinning that's needed to be done and then maintain it with a good clean tip uh, the longer the iron sits hot uh, without actually using it you're going to find that it gets darker and darker and you're getting that uh, crusty look to the tip and that's the oxidation that's occurring on there and nine times out of ten you can take care of all of it just by using the brass ball so um, that's what we need to do for our maintenance let's go in and show you uh, a couple of things that we can do in in the soldering the first thing I wanted to do is to show you how to solder uh, just regular round wire uh, there are times such as when we installed the ceiling fan that was in the in the dollhouse here that we needed to put an extension onto the wires that come from the ceiling fan you may have a light fixture that you're putting into the dollhouse and you need to add extensions uh, to be able to bring the wires down to the basement or to a distant area and you're going to have to solder or put a connection uh, of an added wire to that unit if I take two wires 
what I want to do is to the strip them and of course we're going to be using the same color because we want to maintain the red and the black we would want to put the extension that would be corresponding to what we're um, putting the extension onto so I have two cut pieces of Kynar wire our hookup wire and I had shown you once before that a quick easy way to strip these here I'll clean the tip is to hold this down and then pull the wire out from under the iron if you do that you're taking the Kynar coating that's over that uh, silver plated uh, uh, copper wire and you're going to get some residue on the tip so we'll always go back and keep that tip clean let's go ahead and hit the other one clean the tip set the iron back over you want to make sure that your items you're going to be soldering are clean here we have our two wires the easiest way to do it is to just put the two together and put them at about a 45 degree angle on here and then twist them together this is what most of us do you do want to make sure that if you're going to be soldering the wires that you do have a solid mechanical connection of the two wires first and that gives us a good connection that's right there uh, I have another item that is real handy when soldering is a set of these hands which is nothing more than a couple of alligator clips and I've put our our wire into this one that's over here I'm going to take our soldering iron I'm hitting it into the brass ball to clean it and I'm going to put a little bit of solder onto the very tip and again we want to make sure that the solder is going on there uh, there it goes right smack onto the tip there I like to have a little bit of a puddle if you will on the end of my iron because it the heat will be transferred quite easily to the uh, wire that's on here I'm going to introduce that soldering iron tip to the underside of the wire give it a second to heat up and then I'll come back with the solder to the top and I can just move it across and you can see how it just follows the winding all the way across there. I got a little bit of bubble there, but it's nice and smooth and clean on the inside. Again, I'm stabbing the iron into our brass ball. I'm going to set it, the iron into the holder. Then I would come back with my cutters and just cut off that very end that's on here and you've got a good clean solder joint let's see if I can get up here a little bit that you can see it and it's not going to come apart the problem with doing it that way is we've got that tail and you might want to bend it over one direction something like that but what I'm going to come back with is our liquid tape I prefer the liquid tape over the shrink tube and the biggest reason is that every time I try to put the wire on I forget to put the shrink tube on first but you can f go across here with the um, liquid tape and just run a coating across that and it's good and smooth and uh, doesn't make much of a uh, of a mess at all just be careful on how you put it on here it does take about oh 10 minutes for that to thoroughly dry the second one that I want to do is where we're going to take the wires and put them directly in a line to each other and on that one I cross them in the center and I'm going to grab with my fingers and pinch right at the center joint that's on here there we go going to pinch right at the center joint and then I'm going to wrap this one that's what I get for cutting my fingernails before the show I'll wrap that end around this 
this one and I'm going this direction on that and then come to hold it at that junction point and wrap this one going the other direction and it's going to come around this way and we'll just wrap that until she's good and tight and we're in a straight line and I can pull that pretty tight and it's not going to move once again I'll bring in the alligator clips so that we can hold this in place and I will take the soldering iron again clean it in the brass ball put a little bit of solder right on it you can see how that bubble went right to the tip I'm going to put it underneath the wire give it a minute or a couple seconds to warm up the wire and then I can actually as I'm going on here I had enough solder on there you can see it's just flowing right across there and I can touch it a little extra solder wherever we need it and we've got a nice get that extra solder off of here I'm going to add a little bit of solder to the tip just before I put it down onto the holder and now we can come back with the liquid uh, tape and I can just lightly brush it across here and we'll get it on that side and we've got it nicely coated looks like it's on all sides and let it dry and we've got that wire and the advantage of this one over the first one that we did is that's nice and straight we don't have it uh, the tail that we've pushed over to one side I will tell you that that is very difficult to do when it's within the dollhouse so I don't think that you'll end up doing this very often uh, in my wiring booklet I have a chart that shows you exactly how to wind these and uh, how to put two uh, wire pieces together uh, if you have stranded wire it is just as easy all I would do is um, push the two um, strands together and then twist each of them so that you get a little bit of a wrapping of a mechanical bonding of the free ends first and then go ahead and solder it and it'll accept that solder quite easily and you'll get a very solid connection whether you're using the uh, stranded wire or you're using the single uh, filament uh, wire as my Kynar wire is. So the next thing I want to show you is when we're working in the dollhouse uh, one of the main things that I'm soldering all the time is the flat tape wire. I get a lot of criticism from individuals as to preference over round wire and uh, flat tape wire. A lot of people do not like the flat tape wire because they say it doesn't hold up. The flat tape wire is identical to the round wire. It's only flat. Uh, it actually has a little bit more copper uh, in there so it'll actually conduct more electricity than what the round wire at least the kynar wire that I have uh, generally will do uh, the problem is not the wire itself uh, and it's not whether it's flat or whether it's round the problem is making that connection on the overlap of the flat tapes or connecting a wire, round wire to the flat tape I find by soldering it is by far the easiest and the quickest and the cheapest way to wire your dollhouse and any dollhouse that you wire with good soldering techniques you'll find that it very seldom will go bad in a number of years later uh, it just holds up so much better even better than the grommets alone and I do like using the uh, large grommets uh, if you are completely afraid and you don't want to attempt soldering you can get away with the large grommets but throw away all of the brads and I would even tell you to not use the small grommets in making your connections 
and intersections. But we're going to show you a couple of techniques for soldering, soldering directly to the flat tape. If I want to make a solder point, let's start with the simplest scenario, and that would be that we've got a light fixture of some sort, and I just happen to have uh, one of these street lamps that's in the, that I had in the dollhouse here, and we wanted to wire this directly to the flat tape, I would come with my solder. I've got my iron. I'm going to put a little bit of solder onto the tip, and again, you can see that it is held right at the, the end of the tip. I want to clean the mylar coating that's on the wire first. So I'm just going to make a circle, and you can actually follow it until I get rid of the black that's on there. I want to clean the mylar off of the tip of the iron. I'm going to come back, heat that uh, copper, and then come with the solder to the bottom side of the iron. And if I've heated that copper well enough, I get a very nice little bubble that is shiny and smooth, a little bit of a... Uh, uh, I heard one person call it a volcano, but a volcano has a hole in the center. You don't want that hole in the center. Uh, it's just a little bit of a puddle that's on there. We'll do the same thing on the red side. I'm just going to make a little bit of a circle until I feel that the coating that's on top of the, uh, the strip is off. Clean the iron put it back down and let it set for a couple of seconds so that I'm heating up the copper and then introduce the solder at the edge down below on there and you can see I get a very nice little bubble that's right there. Then I'm going to come back with my two leads that are on here and if you need to uh, strip them a little bit we can use the soldering iron to strip it. I'll hold it down, pull the wire out from underneath I'll do the same thing on this side. If you notice, I have a little bit of a red mark on here because there's an LED in that light. So I want to take my stripped end. I'm going to fold over the end of the wire. I'm going to set the red on top of the solder bubble that we had, puddle. And I'm going to put the iron on top until it melts the wire right into the puddle and until that solidifies. We'll take the other one and we'll bend the wire over. Set it on to this puddle. Let it melt right in. And I could have used just a little bit more solder, I think, on there. But it did go down in there. And we've got a good, tight connection. When I use the flat tape in the dollhouse, I use it more as a junction strip rather than uh, you know, running the actual wires all the way through the dollhouse. So I do a lot of my flat tape running on the floor. I spend most of my wiring with the flat tape on a, the back of the dollhouse or underneath the dollhouse. And I'm using it as a soldering strip that I can bring my round wires from the individual items down and solder them to. It is really a very quick, easy way to solder your entire dollhouse. Now, as to the junction points that we have on here, and I have a strip of uh, circuits tape, which is the gray and the kind of a red color, uh, copper uh, strip tape. And of course, mine is the black and the copper. Uh, where these overlap, you would probably want to uh, make a connection with the, the grommets or the brads. You're going black to black, so you would go in this area right here, and if it's the brads, which I have already told you don't ever use, but you would put two of them into those corners where the black overlaps the black. And another set on the red to the red. If we're going to use our grommets, we can put a grommet red to red and black to black. 
But where we need to solder these, if we're going to solder it, is where this black is on top of this black. We want to take this section right here, and I'm going to apply heat on the top edge, right at the edge on the black. And since we have a chisel tip on here, I can actually scrape that uh, mylar coating away from the edge on there. And you can see the, the copper showing through. I'm going to move over then to the very edge. I have to go through the little bit of copper of, of clear mylar that's extended over and sitting on top of the, uh, the circuits tape and then go through the coating that's on circuits tape. So we need to spend a little bit of more time of cleaning that up right there and then kind of get that edge a little bit. I'm going to clean that mylar off of the soldering iron. I'm going to apply a little bit of solder right to the tip and then I'm going to go back down here and I'm going to try and heat more so to the bottom strip that's on here. Then come over and introduce a little bit of solder and if you can see that I actually have it, it has gone over the top of the black and it has wrapped around and gone directly onto the blue of, of circuits tape. And we've got a good solid connection right there. We'll do the same thing over here where it's red to red. And actually, let me see if I can bring our camera down a little bit further. So we'll go over here and we'll do the red to red. And again, I'm going to start on the top of the red. And you can see that we clean that pretty quick, that you can get the shiny uh, copper. And then go to the left side here, your right side, and clean all the way down to the copper of circuits strip going to clean the goo off of there and then I'm going to put the iron right at that edge heat up both of the strips and then introduce the solder and if you watch that it traveled right across the top where I cleaned it and it is down onto the bottom section and we have a nice solder joint uh, this would be the line coming right through there, which is right on the center of that total bubble that we have. So we have a very good, strong, solid connection coming from this strip and going over to this strip that way. That's how you make your soldering connections on the overlaps of the two vinyl or the two flat tape uh, junctions. Let me go over here to where we have these grommets that have already been put in. If you are having a problem with your wiring or if you should happen to put the grommet in too far, you can actually uh, melt the mylar around the edge of the solder or around the edge of the grommet. Going to clean the tip and I'm going to set the iron right in the uh, grommet itself, leave it there so that it can heat up that the metal of the grommet, and then I'll introduce the solder to the side over here, and you should be able to see it where it goes and sucks in right to the edge of that grommet. I didn't go into the hole, but I soldered the edge of that grommet right down to the wire. If that happened to have been a, a weak connection for you, that's how you would repair that. The other advantage of using the grommets, this was set up in here so we could use a, one of those China plugs and plug it in here. Uh, but the one over here is just in the middle of the tape run, and we may have wanted to put in a uh, wire connection. And it's really nice that we can take a couple, oh, three, four wires together 
and I'll just twist these two together. Let's say these are two red wires coming from uh, two different lights. I can twist those together. I'm going to just clean up the end and cut the ends just a hair. I'll just set those right into that grommet. Well, let's go into this grommet over here, which is by itself. And I'll just set that right into that grommet, clean away that little bit of red coating that's on here. And I'm going to heat it up just a little bit and bring my solder over. Try and go on to the edge of the iron and it is sucked right into that. You can see it actually bubble and it's the air pocket that it's pulling out of that uh, brass grommet and it just sucks those in there and we've got a really solid connection going into the tape where we've wired our uh, round wire into the uh, grommet. So we can use the combination of the grommets or we can go directly to the flat tape wire uh, to make our individual connections. And one other thing that I want to show you is when I teach a class, I um, always make one of my 9-volt battery testers. Uh, it's a good little project to do to show you how to wire components um, into itself or to make these things up. And I, I have one of these here, and I'm going to show you exactly how we have it. We have just two pieces that are involved. We have a 9-volt battery uh, clip, and of course it just has a length of uh, wire that's on the end. The ends are stripped uh, for me already, and it's about 3 16 of an inch of bare wire that comes out of the end. And then we have the two clips that we're going to have. When you push onto the top, we have a little hook that comes out of the bottom for grabbing wires that we're going to be testing. What we need to do is just pull the top off of the clip and the same with the black one, we'll just pull the top off of this one and then we'll take the two tops and put them onto the ends of the wire. There's a hole on the side so we'll put the black on the black and shove that all the way to the end and we'll put the red one on here, shove it to the end, yep, there we go. And then we need to take the clip end here, and we're going to stick our bare wire through the hole that's on that copper strip that's there, or brass piece, fold back the, the metal, and I'm going to use my long nose pliers to just pinch that a little bit tighter and I'll also use the pliers to hold that into position. We'll get my soldering iron, clean the tip, introduce a little bit of solder right to the tip and make sure that it's adhered to that tip. I'm going to come underneath and heat that brass piece, wait for a second or two, and then introduce solder to the top and you notice that it grabbed immediately and soldered that little bit of wire right onto the tip of that piece. We'll let, make sure it solidifies and test it and it's good and tight. We'll go ahead and get our black probe and put it through the hole, fold back the very end of that wire grab our cutters or our long nose pliers, squeeze that good and tight, we'll set in position so it holds it, grab the soldering iron, clean the tip, get a little bit of solder on there, come underneath it, heat it for a couple of seconds, and then introduce the solder to the top, and you can see that that flowed directly onto the top. I didn't have a lot of solder. It's not excessive in what we had. I cleaned the tip of the soldering iron again. We now have that good and soldered. I'm going to bring the caps down and we line these things up so that they go into the slot that's on there. 
and give it a little bit of a tug and we've got the clip all working do the same thing on this one there we go well thought there we go and then all we need is our 9 volt battery put the clip onto the 9 volt battery and you've got your 9 volt battery tester that's as easy as it is again as we're going to shut down we want to clean the tip of the iron we want to put extra solder onto the tip just kind of clean a little bit of that off make sure that we're good and clean and that it accepts solder on both sides and then turn the uh, iron off after we're it is cooled I want to loosen the knurl uh, knob a little bit so that it doesn't stay tight on there to prevent it from seizing up on me at a later date uh, and put this thing away until we're ready to start soldering again.